Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and in today's video, we will cover 20 standards that will help you understand earthing and lightning protection systems better. We will cover both Indian and international standards, so you can just skip to the standard you want by clicking on the chapter that suits your needs. Please comment if you want us to make a long form video on a standard that you would like to know more about. But why should you listen to me? At Axis, We've been manufacturing a wide range of earthing and lightning protection accessories for more than 30 years. You will see our products installed in solar farms, data centers, and commercial and residential projects in more than 100 countries. So why are we discussing this topic? Everyone talks about electrical failures after they have it. But no one asks, was our system installed as per the standard? These standards tell us where to crimp, how to install, what size to choose, and how to test. In this video, we will understand what each standard is meant for and when to use it. Firstly, IS IEC 62305. IEC stands for International Electrotechnical Commission. This is the foundation for designing lightning protection systems. It covers four key areas. Risk assessment, external protection, internal search protection, and safety for people and equipment. It is followed worldwide and has been adopted in India as IS IEC 62305. If you're working on any commercial or industrial project, this is where your lighting protection design should begin. Secondly, IEC 62305. This is the original international standard. It gives a four-part framework for lightning protection design, and you must follow it when consultants demand global compliance. We have a longer video going into the details of IC62305. If you want to know more about the standard, please click on the link in the description. Thirdly, NBC 2016. The National Building Code of India sets the basic safety rules for all types of buildings. Part 8, Section 2 of NBC 2016 deals with lightning protection. It tells you when a lightning protection system is needed based on your building's height, material and usage. If you're working on residential towers, hospitals, schools, or factories, this is the standard you must check before starting the design. Fourthly, NEC, the National Electrical Code, gives guidelines for safe electrical installations. In India, it is published by the Bureau of Indian Standards as NEC 2023. While it mainly focuses on wiring and protection devices, it also covers grounding methods and surge protection. If your project includes internal power distribution, panel boards, or sensitive equipment, this code helps ensure that your entire electrical system is safe and compliant. Number 5. IS3043 This is the main Indian standard for earthing. It explains how to design, install, and test earthing systems for electrical installations. It covers soil resistivity, electrode sizing, conductor selection, and testing methods. You must use IS3043 in all projects in India since it is the base for most earthing designs. Sixthly, OISD 180. This standard is issued by the Oil Industry Safety Directorate and is used in petroleum refineries, terminals and LPG bottling plants. It covers lightning protection and earthing practices for hazardous zones. If you're working in oil and gas or chemical projects with flammable materials, this document is critical for reducing ignition risk from lightning or static discharge. Number 7. IS732 This standard deals with electrical wiring in residential, commercial and industrial buildings. It covers cable sizing, circuit protection, grounding and layout methods. While IS732 is mainly for internal wiring, it also supports correct grounding and coordination with surge protection. Use this standard when you are planning the internal electrical layout for any building. Number 8. IEC TR63227 for solar. This technical report focuses on lightning and surge protection for solar photovoltaic systems. Read this before designing lightning and surge protection for your solar plants. It will help you reduce downtime by protecting your equipment. Number 9. IEC 62713. This technical report explains safety procedures during a lightning strike. It guides first responders and technicians on how to act safely outdoors, such as avoiding unsafe areas and seeking proper shelter to reduce risk and prevent lightning injuries. Unlike a design standard, it is focused on safe behavior around lightning and does not replace standards like IEC 62305 for system design. Number 10. IEC 62561 Part 1 to Part 8 this standard defines the performance and testing requirements for all components used in an external lightning protection system. It covers air terminals, clamps, conductors, earth rods, joints, and test points. 
Use IEC 62561 when you are selecting or approving materials for a lightning protection system. It ensures that every component is tested for strength, corrosion, resistance and conductivity. If you're finding this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel for more insightful videos on electrical engineering. Now number 11, IEC 61643 part 11 and 21. These documents define how surge protective devices should perform and be tested. IEC 61643 Part 11 is for SPDs used in power systems, while Part 21 is for communication and signal lines. Use them to select SPDs that can handle real surges and meet safety and performance requirements. Number 12. API RP545 This recommended practice from the American Petroleum Institute addresses lighting protection for above-ground storage tanks with flammable or combustible liquids. It replaces older guidance such as API 2003 by moving from roof-to-shell shunts to safer methods like isolated roof-to-shell bonding. If you work in fuel storage, tank farms or terminals, this document helps reduce lightning fire risks and aligns with global safety practices. 13. NFPA 780 This US standard from the National Fire Protection Association explains how to design and install lightning protection systems. It applies to all types of structures, including buildings, industries, chimneys and towers. It covers air terminals, down conductors, bonding, grounding, and surge protection. Use NFPA 780 when you're working on projects that follow American codes or when clients ask for designs based on US safety standards. Number 14. IEEE 80. This standard is mainly used for designing substation earthing systems. It shows you how to calculate fall current into the ground. It also guides you in sizing electrodes and conductors to keep touch and step voltages safe. If you're working on utilities, grid-connected plants, or high-voltage yards, IEEE 80 is the key reference standard for grounding design. IEEE 837. This standard shows how to test and prove that your grounding connections are permanent and reliable. It gives guidelines for compression connectors, exothermic welding, and mechanical joints in grounding systems. Use IEEE 837 when you need long-term performance and earth grid joints especially where maintenance is difficult, like substations and transmission yards. Number 16. IEEE 998. This standard guides the design of air termination systems for structures at risk, like substations. It explains lightning protection methods such as the rolling sphere and the electrogeometric model. These methods help prevent direct strikes on lightning masks and live wires. Refer to IEEE 998 when you want to protect open switch yards, control rooms or outdoor equipment from direct lightning strikes. Number 17. UL96 and UL96A These standards from Underwriters Laboratories work together to certify lightning protection systems. UL96 covers the construction and testing of components like air terminals and conductors, while UL96A defines how those components should be installed on structures with flat, slope, shed or gable roofs. Use them when you need both UL-listed materials and a system that meets US compliance for safety and performance. UL467 This UL standard defines the testing and performance requirements for grounding and bonding equipment, including ground rods, clamps, and connectors. It focuses on conductivity, corrosion resistance, and mechanical strength. Use the standard to verify your grounding components meet internationally accepted quality benchmarks. We have a video that shows how we test our products as per UL467, the link is in the description. Number 19. NFC 17102. This standard explains how to select, place, install, and maintain ESC lightning arresters. It also gives a method to decide the protection area and layout based on site conditions. Use this standard when you're designing early stream emission-based lightning protection. We also have a detailed video on the testing requirements of NFC 17102 2011. The link to that video is in the description. Now lastly, number 20, UNE 21186. This Spanish standard is also used for ESE and follows testing methods similar to NFC 17102. While both cover the same technology, some consultants or government bodies specifically require UNE 21186 for compliance. It is commonly seen in government tenders across parts of Europe and Latin America. I hope you now have a clear understanding of these guidelines. At Axis, we have a team of 50 plus engineers who design, install, and test earthing and lighting protection systems as per these standards. Our products have been used in substations, data centers, factories, and even in everyday residential and commercial buildings. 
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content on electrical engineering.